In this video, I go over the concrete wall that is encapsulated in rigid foam. I try to include helpful things I learned, and I try to include what fasteners and tools I use. I hope I can be helpful to you. You of course can leave the concrete exposed. That would have saved me a ton of time, but I wanted a thermal break. I installed two inches of rigid foam under the slab and around these four foot high walls. I needed these walls because I built on a slope. When you encapsulate your building in rigid foam, you pull the entire building enclosure into the conditioned space. When you have high mass walls like concrete, this allows the mass to be a thermal flywheel. Bottom line is put foam around your building and your heating and air conditioning bills will be less. We built a house five years ago and my biggest regret is not putting foam under the slab. We are constantly fighting the slab to heat our home. The slab is radiating 50 degrees, which is the temperature of the earth underneath it. We don't want our home to be 50 degrees inside. We also don't have an airtight house. Our house that we built five years ago was OSB sheathing with house wrap and fluffy insulation. And when I go into my bedroom closet, it's like stepping outside in the winter. I wish I read Fine Home Building and Green Building Advisor before building my house five years ago. Before I built this building that is encapsulated in foam and is airtight, I read a lot of Fine Home Building and Green Building Advisor. It is worth every penny to subscribe to these. Become a member of Green Building Advisor. The forum and articles you get access to are worth it. Fine Home Building puts out a great magazine. I love the podcast. I love that for a great price, you receive the magazine, plus you can read thousands of articles on their website. They helped me, and they can help you. You might have time, but I didn't. Your situation might be different for your build. Um, I did not have time to drill into the concrete and fasten the foam with concrete screws before backfilling. The concrete guys wanted to get out of there. They wanted to backfill the dirt against the concrete wall and leave. Glue's not going to work. So we held it with two by fours and by kicking some rocks up against it just to hold it in place so the machine could get in there and push dirt up against the foam. I installed a few concrete screws with washers in the foam just to hold it in place because I wanted to work on framing the building. I was told somewhere on YouTube or Reddit somewhere that you can cut these little wood washers and put a screw through that to hold the foam in place. I spent like an hour cutting these three inch by three inch wood washers out of some thin wood I had scrap of. It was like Luan or some other type of thin plywood and... As soon as they got wet, they buckled and didn't do a good job. So just use these plaster washers. I would get a box or two of these and use these for fastening your foam. So I had two inches of rigid foam that I was going to attach metal lath outside of so I could then plaster cement over it. And that's what you would see on the outside of the building. You're required to have the screw going into the concrete at least one inch. So I use three and a quarter inch concrete screws. These are the ones I use. You can't use a regular drill. You can't use an impact drill. You need to get a rotary drill. This drill is freaking awesome. You could rent one down the road, but if you're doing a project like this, where you have this much foam you need to fasten and hundreds of cement screws, I would buy one of these. One thing I learned on this project is that you're going to go through a bunch of these bits they are going to break off in the concrete wall. Um, I probably went through at least a dozen of them on this project. Uh, the screws that I used are 3 16 inch thick. So the bit is 5 30 seconds thick. It's a very thin bit. And the bits I got are pretty long. So after you do a few holes, it gets hot. And the trick I learned, which seemed to help, was to drill four holes, then switch out to a bit that isn't hot. Drill four more holes and then switch out to a third bit. Uh, you're going to need to get five or six bits at a time anyway, so you're going to have a bunch there and I would switch them out so you're not 
using this super hot bit through the wall. That seemed to be when it got brittle and it would break. I use these washers to hold the metal lath against the foam. I installed them every six inches across the top. I did a couple rows of that and then installed them every 16 inches. You have to install the metal lath right side up. If it's rough when you move your hand down the outside of it, that means it is correct. If it is rough when you are running your hand upwards, then that means it's upside down. The one thing I learned that I didn't know before I started the project was overlapping the metal lath a couple inches is completely unnecessary and it makes it more difficult to plaster over it. You don't need to overlap it. I would just put it as close as you can. If there's a little bit of space in between the metal lath, I think you're going to be fine. I parged the cement and it didn't come out good. It might have been the product I used. Uh, maybe this wasn't the right stuff. It might have been my fault because this is the first time I've installed something like this. Thank you to Mike Haddock. He is also in Northeast Pennsylvania. He is in my area and he has a YouTube channel that is awesome. If you're doing anything with cement work or you're trying to fix up your driveway or your sidewalk or your steps, Mike Haddock Masonry is an awesome YouTube channel. He helped me save this project. Um, I did this first coat of this veneer cement. It came out looking gross like this. Uh, then he talked about making this Portland paint. So I mixed it up like this. You mix up a bunch of water with some Portland cement and you slop it on and it came out looking good. I'm really happy with it. The product I used was okay for ground contact. So I covered up the bottom uh, with dirt and rocks and then I'm done. Thanks for checking out this video. Check out my other videos. I go into detail with other parts of this building and other projects I've done. Please subscribe.